everybody, welcome to another installment from Ampro Engineering. As you can see, Project Pointless is here and I was finally able to take it for a spin. As you can very clearly see, I did get the correct connector for this T4 Novak speed control. This speed control was originally wired with this particular Molex connector and I did not want to alter it as the entire speed control is original. So I was able to locate this motor wire and got all that buttoned up. So I took the car for a spin and well, I think you should see how that went. That is straight, that is straight. Straight, vehicle's going straight right now. That is straight. I'm gonna tap it the other direction. Not great. The car is four wheel steering and the reason for that is all of the slop in this rear end. Upon closer examination, I noticed that this little ball joint here is heavily, heavily worn. I'll try and zoom in right here. You can see that small semicircular indentation. Well, that's not supposed to be there. This is giving this car completely undrivable handling characteristics. So unfortunately, something's got to happen. You know, folks, sometimes you are working on a project and discover that the more and more and more you dig, the deeper and deeper the hole becomes. And sometimes you just can't keep digging. Fortunately, I have no common sense. So let's go ahead and keep on digging into this. I'm going to disassemble this ball joint and we are going to repair it. The ball joint here has been disassembled and it's a little harder to see on this side. It's much more apparent here, but the notches are quite deep. We're simply going to build up the plastic again using super glue. This method is quite robust as super glue dries about as hard as steel. I suppose you could use an epoxy as well, but in this application, um, given what I want to fix, I find that super glue is going to work fine. On top of that, when this is completely dry and sanded, I'm going to place a very thin sheet of brass, about as thin as I can find, just to give it a better wear surface so that it's not plastic rubbing on plastic. What I'd like to do is place a couple dabs of super glue onto this worn surface, but because this would, this part here would normally lay like this, I have to make sure that it stands straight up and I'll only place, actually I think I'll place it on both sides. I'll just put a little heavier of a coat on the bottom side and a lighter coat on top. This is gonna take a couple of passes. Now, which is the deeper side? I can't tell. I think this is, I think they're both pretty bad. Okay, I'm just gonna put some glue like that. This is a fairly thick super glue. This is just standard Gorilla Glue. Um, I have seen very watery super glue, and I think that that's going to be a lot harder to build up the surface. You want something more of like a gel. I have the small magnetic holder that I'm going to place into this tray, and we will just leave it here for a couple hours, and I'll come back this evening and put a little more. The chassis side is a lot less worn, so I've placed some right there. As you can see here, I've covered both sides of this pivot point with some super glue and it has fully cured. I've done the same thing on the chassis. In order to make sure that I sand this nice and flat, I'm going to install this back where it belongs, and that'll give me a better frame of reference when I'm sanding this down with the file. Obviously, this is gonna cause some binding, to say the least. Let's sand down those high spots, and we should get a nice flat surface. I'm gonna do my best to show what I'm trying to do. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to do most of this offline because it's simply too difficult to look through the camera and make sure that this is all true. But basically, I have this area here that I wanna keep untouched and this area here that I wanna keep untouched. So we are just going to put the file right on top and I'm making it so that it's as parallel to these two faces as possible and run the file back and forth. 
So I'm going to continue doing this for who knows how long, and I'll be right back. I think this is pretty good for this application. It's nice and flat. There's no more indentation here. And what I want to do is test the, the pivot point now in the transmission and see how much lateral action we have. The transmission is back installed, and let's see what kind of action we have now here. So I'm going to move it in the direction where it should not move, which is... Oh, wow. That's pretty darn... Wow, that's actually not bad. So I'll try and pull the axle here. That's all the play we have. I kind of think I can do better. Um, and to be honest, I mean, it's probably fine at this point here. But the rough super glue surface rubbing on the ABS transmission housing, I think, is simply going to uh, cause a lot more wear a lot faster. So even though this is not going to be a commonly driven car, I still believe that uh, it's going to cause way too much wear on it. That, seriously, why did that just come off? Note to self. That's, uh, we should make sure that doesn't fall off. Those are rare. Okay, stay there. My plan is to use a little bit of shim stock on this surface to not only even further reduce this play, but also to provide a nice, sur a nice smooth surface. I wanted to use brass, but I don't know if I can uh, find brass that's going to be thin enough for this application. So let me get the shim stock and let's try and tighten this up. My plan is to take some of this shim stock, if anybody's heard of this, but I swear by it, you see it comes in a number of thicknesses. And to those of you familiar with the metric system, I feel the same way. I have no idea what any of this means. I'm always busting out the calculator. Anyways, you can see the color of the shim material corresponds to these different thicknesses. And I think, I'm probably gonna want to go with something that has a little more substance. These are all pretty darn thin. I was thinking here this two thousandths. Usually you would measure it, but it's you know it's so hard to do. I might just cut a little slice out, wedge it in there, and see if it does any any differences here. So I'm thinking right now it's between the red and the green, and. Uh, Maybe even the tan, but let's give it a try. I've slipped in a couple of slices of the green. Yeah, I think the greens are a candidate here. There's hardly any movement with the green. To install it, that's gonna be a little trickier. I'll show you what my plan is. That. I love Shugu. It goes on beautifully. It uh, peels off very nicely, and it's just tough as nails. So my plan is to just put a little, little dab of it here. I'm actually going to put it on both sides. First, I'll uh, put the liner here and here. And then when I put the transmission back in, I'll put a couple dabs on this as well. The material is thin enough to where, you know, I, it'll always just slice off when, uh, in the event I want to take this ball joint out in the future. So I think that's going to be adequate. So you can see I've made a little notch in the shim stock like that because I do want it to cover that entire area here and we'll do it to the other side as well and then I'll trim all this off once it's installed that looks pretty good for now let's let this dry and then we'll put the top half on all the glue has cured now and I'm just trimming off the excess shim stock here to make a nice presentable look I know this looks dirty but again it's nothing more than years and years and years of wear and uh and looks it looks kind of cruddy i know i mentioned that i wasn't going to put any lubricants in here like grease or oil but i am going to put something in here this is a graphite based lubricant it's basically pencil lead it has a fluid that helps it to obviously be propelled with the aerosol in the can, but the fluid dries very, very quickly and you're left with nothing more than a powder. I use this all the time in applications where the vehicle is exposed to dirt because since you're only left with powder, it doesn't attract any kind of grime and mud and, uh, and all that good stuff. I bought this on Amazon and I'm gonna actually make a little droplet in here. So it is a tad messy. So I'm gonna try and hold this here and just spray this down here. If you are gonna go down this path, please get one that is used for door locks. Uh, more industrial graphite powders are incredibly uh, messy to work with. The graphite is almost pure and it just makes a complete disaster. I've got some at the office and it's almost unusable for RC car applications. You can see that I have the 
shim stock that is still protruding upwards. And I am going to just slot this sandwiched it in there. That has been reinstalled. Moving this side to side now that it's reinstalled is, I mean, there's, wow, there's really, there's almost no play. That is really great. Up and down, it's really clear if it wasn't whacking the shocks here. Rear shocks are screwed back in, and you can see we've still got some nice suspension. Our articulation is all there, but that side-to-side -side wobble is, I mean, it's basically gone. I think we need to take this for a spin now. So as you can tell, there was a massive improvement. The vehicle now travels in a single direction at a time if you want it to, which is much, much more than it was able to do previously. So I'm super happy with how this car came out. And I completely understand that it probably would have been simple enough to locate a car with uh, a better chassis and in better shape. This thing's obviously got a cut out here and some notches here and here. But you know, to me, that all adds to the car's character. The next time you see it will be during the body preparation and painting video. And that's gonna be a couple months because it's just too cold out right now. I do appreciate you all watching. I've got some, some things coming up over here, anybody who has followed me on Facebook or Instagram, has already seen this. This is the Blackfoot interior. This particular one is the all SLS one. And as you can see, this has the shifter for the four wheel drive system and it is an automatic, so it will have the column shift. The prototype is all installed, as you can see here. In fact, I can turn the lights on by clicking this switch there. You will see more of this uh, very soon. I'm just waiting for one particular little bracket and then this guy will be up on YouTube as well. Again, everyone, thank you all so much for your time. Remember, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook and Ampro Engineering on both. Please comment below if you've got any questions. I'm always very content to read what you have to say and it does help me a lot on this channel. And before you take off, please check out the band Blue Pinto. They allow me to use their songs in my videos and the link to their Facebook is in the end credits. Thank you all so much and we'll see you next time.